I have spent the last two years trying to get a study underway to evaluate cannabidiol um, and whole plant extract in children with epilepsy. So you can draw one of two conclusions, either it's very difficult to do or I'm not very good at doing it. I'll let you decide. So why are we so interested in cannabinoids? As Mac has already said, epilepsy is really hard to treat. Um, you know, over the last, probably 18 out of the last 20 years is when we've got most of our anti-seizure drugs. So they're all pretty new. Um, we've got the ketogenic diet, we've got implantable devices, there's epilepsy surgery, there's other options for seizures. And yet nothing has changed in terms of one fact. One in three people with epilepsy continue to have seizures in spite of what we're doing. So what does that tell us? It tells us we need something else. And everybody is hoping and trying to figure out if cannabinoids could be that something else. So what do we know about cannabinoids? Mac has just shared with us that it is plausible that they would have an effect. Um, and animal studies have shown that they can have anti-seizure effects. Although there have been some animal studies that have shown that different parts of the plant can actually cause seizures. Um, studies in people with epilepsy that have been done over the years haven't been great in terms of their scientific importance. Um, it's been small numbers or it's been surveys where parents have been asked what they gave their kids and it's often been not in a very controlled way. So it's very hard to draw conclusions from those studies. And the American Academy of Neurology issued a guideline uh, on you know, when we can use medical marijuana and what conditions we should consider it in. When it comes to epilepsy, they just said we don't know if they work. And that's where we were and that's where we are really from 2014. The only thing that has changed as a way of an update is the studies that are going on in the States using a Pediolex, which is a pharmaceutically produced cannabidiol, 99% cannabidiol. And preliminary data from Dr. Davinsky um, and the group in UCLA and New York just basically showed that they had 137 uh, really group of different people, kids and adults, different types of epilepsies, but all of them had one thing in common, that their seizures were not responding to whatever current therapies we had. Um, they had at least three months of treatment with a Pediolex, which was just added into whatever they were on already. There was no placebo. Everybody knew that they were getting the treatment. Um, and they found that um, on their preliminary report that uh, there was at least a halving of the seizures um, for, for the people that took it. They didn't draw any conclusions really from that just yet. It's a study that's ongoing and expanding. Um, and they just really advocated for, in their report at the meeting uh, this year that there would be more studies. And so this is where we are, this is where I am. Um, the American Academy of Neurology and the Cochrane Review and other data that's published tells me that there's just not enough evidence. Um, and yet Health Canada has stepped in and said, you can prescribe the bud, the plant, you can now prescribe the oil um, in whatever form that's coming in. And, you know, the media present cases that, you know, give very impressive studies of, you know, the Charlotte's Web, the family, the experience in Colorado and all of these stories. And they are impressive. So that's me trying to figure out what to do. And that's you guys trying to figure out what are you supposed to do? How are you best advocating for your families and for your kids and for yourselves? Um, if Health Canada tells you it's available, if what's already available isn't working, then sure, why shouldn't you try it? So this is the Supreme Court ruling that says, yep, you can give um, fresh marijuana buds, cannabis oils, um, and that the healthcare practitioner will be prescribing it. Dr. Gupta even actually came out and said he was wrong and said he's now a big advocate. So I don't know how many times we'll see I was wrong on the screen, but there we go. That was one. And so when it comes to our bodies, who we look for for advice about what we should be prescribing, there are a number of different kind of unions and other groups that let us know. And the Ontario Medical Association, you know, say that, yes, you are legally safe to prescribe it. Um, the patient then has to take that prescription to a dispensary. So there isn't maybe currently a huge amount of oversight over what they actually come away with. You're not sure. Um, for me in particular with kids, now things will change, I guess, with the oil, but if I was to prescribe, and I haven't, but if I was to prescribe a plant to a family, they would then have to procure that plant from a dispensary, go to a another location or at home, and then make an oil. And I'm not sure what that child is then getting. 
uh, and that's kind of the challenge. But I'm told legally I can do it. Um, the CMPA, which is like my protection so society, did a survey of people and found that 93% were not comfortable uh, and were not certain about what the implications would be in terms of either prescribing or indeed not prescribing or kind of feeling like you're withholding something from your families and the kids that you take care of. So what is the concern? Very simply put, I don't know what exactly to prescribe. I don't know what formulation is best to give it in. Um, to who? Which kids will it work better in? Or which adults? Which types of epilepsies? Which EEGs? Which genetic diagnosis? Um, what dose? What should I be looking out for? What if they're on Keppra? What if they're on Lamictal? What if they're on the ketogenic diet? And finally, like I've just explained through the fact that patients and families are kind of procuring and making their own product, what will the patient actually get at the end of the day? This is what happens when something has been brought through, receives a DIN number, which is what happens with a drug and is firmly regulated. This is the insert of a packet where there's a huge advisory and all kinds of information about what to ask your doctor, what to ask your pharmacist, what to do if you're pregnant, what to do if you're under 12, exactly how many to take, how many hours apart, and all of the potential side effects. And that's Advil. So what do I know? What can I prescribe? And what's safe to do? So what's the risk? Simply put, the cannabis plant has over 500 active biological components. So if I prescribe something, I have a certain you know, knowledge that, okay, I'm told this is high in cannabidiol, which is what we're interested in, is low in THC, which is what we want to avoid. But what's everything else? What else is there in the plant? Is it helpful? Is it harmful? Is it going to interact with other things? Specifically for me, when I'm looking after kids who have epilepsy, I want to know what it's going to do with their other anti-seizure medicines. Is it going to increase their level of um, divalproics? Is that going to make them sleepy? Is that going to cause them more problems than they already have? Um, or is it going to reduce the effect of drugs that are actually helping a little bit, but maybe not the full, the full solution? And that's my challenge at the moment. So the missing link I'm saying is where scientific evidence should come in. This is like a kind of a personality test. When you look at this and you see that there was one compound of cannabinoids and it works as both an anti-epileptic, it works for your bone, it works for your gut, your immune system, your inflammation, diabetes, anti-cancer, anti-ischemia, relaxing your blood vessels. Depending on what type of personality you are, you either look at that and go, yes, we've got it. Or you look at it and you go, I don't know, I don't believe that, I'm not sure. So that's obviously for you to decide. I'm a skeptic. <laughs> but I know that we can find the evidence, and that's what's missing. The first step, similar to what Mac is describing, though a little pre-first step when it comes to kids, we can't just have a placebo trial. So at Sick Kids, we're hoping to have a safety trial first. And basically, it's a small study um, with Health Canada approval, we're hoping, um, where we can just figure out what should we be giving, how much of it should we be giving, and what happened when we gave it to these kids in terms of their other drugs that they were on, their levels go up or down, what happened with their seizures, and basically around safety. Um, it'll take 20 weeks, have to give it for a reasonable amount of time, but actually we plan on following them for a year because it's just so much unknowns. We just don't have enough information. After that, all things being well, we would hope to move on to a bigger study similar to what Mac has just described that he'll be organizing in adults we need that extra step in kids, though, because we have to be extra careful around the safety parameters um, in terms of dosing. So what I'm saying is the specific component is what's important. Um, it's not well known yet. Um, it is certainly plausible that cannabinoids have an effect on epilepsy, but we need to know that information, that extra piece. And I will say to you, watch this space, because I know that a lot of us are working very hard in terms of trying to make this something that we know and we understand better.